A Reply to Talk Origins Deception by Omission by Mike Dunford Posted on June 23, 2002 Read for you by Pete Andrews George Fernandez has recently written an article, Talk Origins Deception by Omission, which has been incorporated into the True Origin website. The theme of Mr. Fernandez's argument appears to be that the Talk Origins archive, by failing to present his perspective on various arguments, commits deception through omission. Rather than get bogged down in a point-by-point -point rebuttal to Mr. Fernandez's article, I'm going to restrict my reply. Although it might seem to be a bit unusual, I don't see any need to directly address anything more than his conclusions for reasons which I hope will become clear by the time I am done. I will reproduce each of the paragraphs of his conclusion in full in indented text, with my own comments following each paragraph. Fernandez begins his conclusion. At the beginning of this article, I had stated that the full unbiased disclosure of truth is what is essential here, and Talk Origins is not even close to providing this. Aside from the obvious fact that complete unbiased information is always better than partial or distorted information, it is infinitely more so in this arena than in any other. Why? The Talk Origins archive provides, on its main homepage, a full disclosure of its purpose, which is to provide mainstream scientific responses to the many frequently asked questions and frequently rebutted assertions that appear in Talk Origins. Although Mr. Fernandez might wish it were otherwise, the accepted scientific view is that biodiversity, the wide range of organisms which live on the Earth, is the result of a process of common descent or biological evolution. This view of life is accepted by virtually every scientist working in the field now and has been generally accepted since not long after the first publication of Darwin's On the Origin of Species. It has been longer still, over two centuries, since the young earth creationist perspective has had any claim of being part of mainstream science. The policy of the Talk Origins archive on including viewpoints such as creationism which differ from the scientific view has been clearly outlined on the welcome page for as long as the archive has been available. For your convenience I will repeat it here. Why doesn't the archive contain any articles that support creationism? The Talk Origins archive exists to provide mainstream scientific responses to the frequently asked questions and frequently rebutted assertions that appear in Talk Origins. The archive's policy is that readers should be given easy access to alternate views, but those who espouse alternate views should speak for themselves. Hence, the archive supplies links to relevant creationist websites within many of its articles. It also maintains a frequently updated and extensive list of creationist and catastrophist websites so that readers may familiarise themselves with anti-evolutionary perspectives on scientific issues. The current list of links is available by clicking directly on the hyperlink in the above paragraph. Efforts have been made to list all of the major creationist websites and a form has been provided to allow readers to suggest other links. In addition, efforts are also made to include links to relevant creationist material within many of the individual FAQ pages. By linking to creationist sites instead of attempting to incorporate their material, the potential for inadvertently misunderstanding or misrepresenting their positions is eliminated. To summarise, if Mr. Fernandez is accusing the Talk Origins archive of pretending to represent both sides in a debate, he is clearly mistaken. The archive does not now claim, nor has it ever claimed, to present anything other than the mainstream scientific perspective. Mr. Fernandez wishes notwithstanding, his young earth viewpoint does not fall into that category. If, on the other hand, he believes that any website participating in a discussion of evolution needs to present all of the views, one is forced to wonder how his article found its way onto the True Origin site. The True Origin site presents no articles favouring evolution and its links page contains no sites favouring evolution. Mr. Fernandez continues. It is not clear to me that the majority of the volunteers who work for the archive are in fact atheists or agnostics. 
In fact, I do not know what their beliefs are. It is not a topic which comes up much. In the area of religious beliefs or lack thereof, I can only speak for myself, and I am neither an atheist or an agnostic. I am a Roman Catholic. Although Mr. Fernandez might wish otherwise, there is no shortage of Christians or of Christian denominations which feel that there is no compelling theological reason to cling to a young Earth view of Earth history. There is also no shortage of Christians who find no compelling theological reason to object to an evolutionary view of the history of life. I would advise Mr. Fernandez to read the God and Evolution FAQ. To those that visit the Talk Origins site in search of answers, people that may be undecided in seeking unbiased information, to these people, Talk Origins owes the courtesy of behaving in an informative capacity and not as an indoctrination site. Apparently, however, Mr. Fernandez does not feel that the True Origin site or any other creationist website owes its visitors the same courtesy. He expresses dismay that we do not directly present the arguments of creationists on the archive, but he is apparently unconcerned by the failure of websites such as those of the Institution for Creation Research, Answers in Genesis, or even the True Origin Archive, to present any pro-evolution arguments at all. Mr. Fernandez fails to provide any reason why only those websites, such as Talk Origins, which present the views of mainstream science, should be obligated to present alternate views. But it goes far beyond being just courteous or professional. It is morally irresponsible to misguide people through omission into any position that has eternal consequences. Yes, eternal consequences. That last statement may sound religiously biased, but it is actually a logical result since, regardless of who is right or wrong in this matter, the ultimate end is of eternal consequences, whether an eternity in the grave or an eternity in heaven or hell. That last statement sounds religiously biased because it is religiously biased. Some Christians, such as Mr. Fernandez, might believe that there are eternal consequences if the human body was created via a process of descent with modification from an ape-like ancestor. Others, such as the Pope, disagree, stressing that it is the creation of the mind or the soul that required the direct intervention, and not the body. Mr. Fernandez again should return to the God and Evolution FAQ before assuming that all Christians feel that evolution and Christianity are incompatible. The purpose of the Talk Origins Archive, as I have already pointed out, is to present the mainstream scientific perspective on Earth history and evolution. That is, to educate people on what is accepted science and why. As I have pointed out, we do also make an effort to provide links to opposing arguments when appropriate in the interest of presenting other views. We do not, however, attempt to present all views ourselves. That is not a necessary part of education. If it were, we would be teaching geocentrism in astronomy class, Holocaust denial in history, and both Judeo-Christian and Hindu creationism in biology.